Hello everyone, um, this is Josh and this is my first podcast and I'm going to be reviewing episode 4, Fearful Pranks in Sue. Very apt title for the Halloween episode. And we start off in the ugliest possible manner to where we flash back to New Orleans in 1961 where a young black boy is lynched and hung by a bunch of white men. And Marie Laveau very, very pissed, and understandably so, so, especially after the boy's mother expresses her optimism for the future and for racial integration, talking about, you know, President Kennedy being in the White House and everything. So we show the boy being taken down from the tree, and now it's time for the snakes, the blood, and the raising of the dead. And we, we get to see just how skilled Marie Laveau is. And I honestly do have to say that the ripping of the limbs and the disemboweling of the lynchers, uh, I can only say, Walking Dead creators and producers, you should watch that scene because that is how you do a zombie attack. After the flashback, we return right to the, uh, right back to the school, um, imitation Hogwarts, (laughs) and, um, Spalding. Oh, Spalding, Spalding, Spalding. Having his little tea party, um, putting on his record and his disgusting fingernails. Uh, ladies, I think you would agree he is in desperate need of a manicure, though I don't think uh, anybody would want to touch him. Um, he hears Fiona and Madison uh, fighting, witnesses Fiona slit Madison's throat, and he... <clears throat> Rolls her up in the carpet like she's some sort of burrito. Uh, into which <clears throat> Fiona goes outside and finds Queenie lying in the greenhouse with a huge hole in her stomach and blood all over the place. Now, though, <clears throat> I like Queenie. Love her brutal honesty. Love the way characters being portrayed. Why would you try and seduce a minotaur? This thing is a half man, half bull, with two huge horns sticking out of its head, and it's in love with Marie Laveau, and you're trying to seduce the thing that was sent to kill all of you. You don't think that it's going to attack you? Well, moving on. So Fiona brings Queenie up to the bedroom and literally breathes life back into her. And, um... In a shock, Madame Lalaurie, Lalaurie is grateful for Queenie for saving her from the Minotaur and is absolutely beside herself. Just not knowing how to be kind to the black girl or slave girl, but she shows gratitude. And during that scene, we have Cordelia and Fiona going back and forth with each other about their respective visits, visits to... Uh, Angela Bissett, to where Fiona is pissed that Cordelia went there showing weakness. Pretty much putting it out there that Marie Laveau is not only a stronger witch than Cordelia, but a stronger witch than Fiona, that neither of them can perform this fertility spell. Fertility spell. Now, yes, I know Fiona went there looking for the uh, potion of immortality, but honestly, and I'm pretty sure she knew too going there, there was never a chance that she was going to get it, no matter if she could have given Marie Laveau a unicorn that shit $100 bills. She wasn't getting that potion. She knew it. We all knew it. She was going there posturing. She was going there pretty much announcing, I'm the supreme, I'm here. Do whatever you... Come at me, pretty much. Ah, so where do we go next? The Minotaur getting... The Minotaur head getting delivered to Marie Laveau. Box comes in. We all know what's going to be inside the box. And here's my one gripe with this episode. When the head is attached to the body, it looks formidable. 
it looks like a bull. When we look in the box, it's a pathetic looking Sesame Street character. They could have done such a better job with that. The only cool part of that was the bull head blinking. So that shows that even the head being severed from the body, the immortality spell can sustain even powerful magic. The head's still alive. Judging by Angela Bissett's reaction to that, though, her bastion, I don't think the head can be reattached to the body, even if she could find the body. I wish they would have left that scene on I wish they would have did that scene on camera, though. I wish they would have showed Fiona dispatching of the Minotaur. I think that would have been a great scene. It would have shown more of Fiona's magical prowess. And I, I just think it would have been a great scene to, to keep in the episode. So now we go to Hank. Hank, 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 Hank. A psychopath or not, monster or not, serial killer or not, whatever you are. I knew you were a bastard right away, but whatever you are, why would you have an affair on a witch? I don't care how much of a monster you are, you're human. The witch is going to fuck you up. Especially when the witch you're married to, her mother, your mother-in-law, is the reigning supreme. I don't know what you're thinking, and I really hope you get yours later on in the series, because you killed Alexandra Breckenridge. I was so happy he opened the door, and there's our hot little redhead, Moira from season one. This time not turning into Frances Conroy whenever she gets sexy. So that was a plus. I was all, yay, seeing her, and then boo, because she got her head blown out two minutes later after making soup that she got in a vending machine. But Alexandra Breckenridge did tweet that she will be back for episode six. Maybe through flashback. Maybe she gets brought back as a zombie. Who knows? Because now we have racism, incest, bestiality, zombies. Got a lot of shit going on. But alright. Um, the council. Nan comes in announcing that the council members are there. Quentin. <laughs> Leslie Jordan. I think he's great. And his wit, his sarcasm, I, I, re I really, I just, I, I hope we see more of him. I, I really do. Um, Francis Conroy, Myrtle Snow. She's great in everything that she does. She's great. She was great in season one, great in season two. Fantastic throughout the interrogation. Penbrook, forgettable. Not even going to mention her. She was just forgettable. All right, so now we have the interrogation of the witches. Delia spills every single bean from Queenie getting attacked to her going to see Marie Laveau until finally Fiona walks in and pretty much tells her to shut up. As much as I hate to say it, Zoe's testimony was boring, except for the one part which she was saved by Quentin, where she's like, oh, you know, she's a movie star, and she's got, you, you know, you know, she's, she's what she's got, and Pembroke is like, no, what is that? And Quentin is like, that one thing that you lack, charisma, I just, I, I can't even imitate the way he did that type of voice. Nan, straightforward. And pretty much confirms Myrtle's suspicion that Fiona killed her because they think she's the next Supreme. And Queenie, <laughs> pretty much putting out the, if Madison's dead, it's her own fault because she likes hard drinks, big dicks, and if she's dead, it's probably because she offered to give the Grim Reaper a hand job. That was great, and the look on the council's face just pretty much says it all. So it's Fiona's turn to take the stand. Before she takes the stand, where uh, we go back to a flashback right after Annalise's death, where we see the young, jealous Myrtle who is willing to do anything she has to do to take down Fiona. As the guardian of veracity in the vernacular, 
which I pretty much, I guess that's, she is the guardian of truth. She puts a spell onto Spalding to where he can't tell lies. Then we see Spalding, we learn that Spalding really lost his tongue because he cut it off himself. So he could not testify against Fiona. And in his last words, um, I've always loved you. I, you know, I'm forever in love with you. Which, actually, I guess you could say was pretty sweet, but, um, I guess, uh, for American Horror Story, it was sweet and gruesome. So when Spaulding gets questioned, he implicates Myrtle. Because Myrtle says, what does Myrtle say? Um, tell us who is the witch that was responsible for you losing your tongue. And it was Myrtle who was responsible for him losing his tongue. Because if Myrtle hadn't placed that little spell on him, he wouldn't have cut his tongue off. So Francis Conroy freaks out and oh my god, was that great. Just flipping out on him. I thought that just the way she did that, the way she did that scene was great. Um, where she went and said there hasn't been a witch uh, convicted and burned at the stake since I, I think she said they were either 1920 or 1929. And let me just add, I have a book of matches in my pocket that I'm dying to use. That was great. <sighs> but it turned out that, um, again, no evidence against Fiona. Because we don't have anybody to testify against Fiona. And then Cordelia steps up. And we learn that Madison was not going to be the next Supreme. Because of her heart murmur. And you, you have that little glimpse of both... Fiona, not Fiona, yeah, Fiona and uh, Spaulding looking at each other like, oh fuck, you killed this poor girl for no reason. But I think, I have to say, the interrogation of the council to the school was the best part of this episode, and the interaction of Francis Conroy and Jessica Lang made the episode. Made the episode. Um, we had the brief the, the brief moment of Zoe and Kyle, of Zoe and Kyle, to where Kyle speaks. Everybody was wondering when he was going to speak again. So episode three, he says no. Well, he screams no. Episode later, he adds a word, no Kyle, which he says twice. So Zoe goes to make him some tuna fish, and she decides, hey, maybe I'll poison him because you know you're already dead, and. We brought you back through dark magic, magic where we pretty much married the devil. But hey, maybe rat poison will kill you because now I feel guilty because of this life that you're living. And Kyle is nowhere to be found. Frank and Kyle gets up and and goes away. But he'll fit right in, seeing that it's Halloween and his face is all covered with blood and he's gonna walk around like a zombie. He should go to a costume party because he'll definitely get best costume. So when Zoe just goes home. Doesn't go to look for him, just goes home. But hey, we had that little flashback, little throwback, little uh, shout out there to uh, season one with the kid driving by in the car and he's in the, the skeleton outfit. That was pretty cool, though I wish they would have made that rubber man instead. But still, ni nice, little, uh, nice little shout out there to season one Murder House. Moving forward, uh... What do we have left? Marie Laveau, again, summoning her, her zombies. Um, just a, a very cool scene. Uh, her eyes rolling in the back of her head, turning all white, cutting open the snakes. And when she grabbed the noose, she grabbed that old noose and she crushed that noose. I, ha I had the thought, and there they come. Madame Lalaurie's daughters knocking on the front door. And we see the school surrounded by zombies. And with only Zoe, Queenie, and Nan in the school. No Cordelia, no Fiona. We don't know if the council's still there. So maybe the council is, is going to be able to help out because they are in the next episode. We, we saw that in the coming attractions. But all we saw in the house were the three students, um, the next door neighbor who came to see Nan, 
And I know a lot of you are going to probably think this is mean, but I really think Nan did something to that cake. Either a potion, a spell, something to where he's attracted to her. Or maybe she's just a fantastic baker. I, I, I don't know. But um, I think she definitely has more powers than her um, uh, being able to read minds. Being a telepath. Uh, we go to Fiona and Cordelia at the bar. And they're sitting there, they're talking, getting drunk, being chummy mother-daughter, asking their three questions. What do you have against Hank? And again, F Fiona says, I don't know how you can't see that he's pretty much a piece of shit. He reeks of bullshit. Maybe Fiona's a little more attuned to it because one, she's not in love with him and we all know love is blind, love blinds, we do crazy things for love, we don't see what everybody else sees because we don't want to. Um, very convincing lie, did you kill Madison? No, I did not. And Fiona played her cards too quick, she didn't wait for the third question, she jumped into who do you think is the next Supreme? So I don't think Cordelia is going to give up that information to Fiona because she she knows Fiona's powers are weakening. and Fiona knows that now Cordelia knows because she's obsessed with who the next Freeman. Now we go to the bathroom scene. Cordelia gets ashes thrown in her face. Now I know a lot of people have thought it's it's Myrtle because of Cordelia standing up for her mother. Myrtle not liking that. But um, I've watched the episode probably six times already. I've rewound that scene. I've been looking. I've been trying to see hints of who I think it might be. I don't think it's. I don't think it's Myrtle. I don't think it's Francis Conroy because the person under that cloak looks heavier and shorter. I definitely think it's somebody from um, Marie Laveau's clan that did it. They're they're trying they're trying to strike. They're not just going to send the zombies. They're going to send the zombies. They're going to attack the witches. Marie Laveau is pissed, so I think it's one of Marie Laveau's clan. So when we have the previews for the following episode and we see the person uh, being burned at stake, I think that they figured out who it was that hit Cordelia with the acid. I don't think it's Myrtle. I've heard a lot of people talking that they think it's Myrtle that they're burning. I don't think so. So in saying that, to uh, to recap, I love the episode. I thought it was a good episode. There were a couple of a couple of things that I had I had a problem with. I wanted to see Fiona dispatch of the Minotaur. I wish the Minotaur's head. I wish that was a better scene, seeing the head in the box. That could have been done better. Um, I think Nan is starting to step on some toes. I don't think she realizes what she's doing. I think she, you know, she's generally showing concern for Madison, but she, I think she's going to get herself into some hot water, and I guess being a telepath, you know, that, that comes with the territory. Um, I see Queenie. I know a lot of people thought Queenie was going to want to join Marie Laveau, and Marie Laveau's side because she's a descendant of that tribe, but I see her being pissed that she was attacked, and her being a human voodoo doll. I see I see her being able to inflict some punishment. This episode had no Misty in it. Um, I, I'm really intrigued to find out more about Misty. Uh, a lot of people saying they think that she could be the next Supreme. Maybe she shows up at the school and helps against the, um, the zombie attack. I don't know, but I'm definitely intrigued to find more out about Misty. I'm sure her only power isn't the power of resurgence. She showed through meditation that she could possibly be some type of telepath because she was able to sense Zoe and Madison. Now, interesting, Madison wasn't the next Supreme because of a heart murmur. So, I think either Zoe or Misty... I don't think Nan, I'm not sure if, um, you know, Down Syndrome is, you know, something that doesn't display radiant glowing health. Uh, we learned 
Two of the Seven Wonders, Transmutation and Pyrokinesis. Um, maybe throughout more of the episodes, we'll find out what the other five are, what the other five are. Um, very interested to see if some type of relationship um, comes with, with uh, Nan and the neighbor guy. Uh, I think he's been enchanted. Um, also, questions that I've heard that have arised is if Nan is a telepath, how come she can't read Fiona's mind? and see that it was Fiona that did kill Madison. I have a simple answer to this. Fiona is the Supreme. I'm sure she has the ability to block telepaths. I don't think you can be the Supreme to where a witch with a, I'm not going to say basic ability, I'm not, I don't think telepath is a basic ability. It is a gift, but I'm sure there are other telepaths out there. Um, I don't think you can be the Supreme to where you can have a telepath being able to read your mind. So I would equate that to, you know, those of you who are familiar with the Harry Potter universe, um, Snape being able to employ Occlumency against Voldemort to where Voldemort cannot read his mind, or, you know, Dumbledore being able to, you know, use Occlumency to block. I definitely think that is what Fiona can do with Nan. So I don't think, you know, I, I don't think that's a mistake. I just, Nan can't read Fiona's mind. Oh, and one last thing to talk about. Um, Spalding keeping Madison as a doll. So not only is Madison dead, for no reason now, apparently. She wasn't killed because she's the next Supreme. She was, now she's just collateral damage, I guess you could say. Now the poor girl is sitting up wherever Spalding spends his spare time, in a little chair, in just bra and panties, hanging out having a tea party with Spalding. What could be worse than that? It's not bad enough that this poor girl is dead. Now she's dead in the doll. So I guess we can all take a guess at what Spaulding is doing with poor little Madison. Maybe Madison comes back. Maybe she'll be brought back to life. Or maybe she's just going to spend the next couple episodes being a doll. I don't know. All right, well, that is my my review of the episode. Again, like I said, I loved it. I, I love this season so far. Um, four episodes in, um, I'm definitely more into this into this season than I was Asylum. Um, I don't think this season is as good as Murder House yet, but it's getting there. It's building. Uh, only took four episodes for the truce to end, so now we got nine episodes left. It's a 13 episode season. Uh, things are gonna get bloody. Even more so, um, we've had a lot so far. We've had uh, racism, incest, bestiality. We have zombies. We have murder. We have infidelity. Still, Hank, why would you cheat on a witch? Brandon Alexandra Breckenridge is just dropped dead gorgeous with that beautiful right hair that she has. But still, why would you cheat on a witch? Um, interested to see what happens next week. Can't wait to see the burning. Can't wait to see who it is. What happens with Cordelia. Uh, the attack on the school. And the revenge that Fiona is now going to take. It's just going to be back and forth. Revenge, 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 revenge. Um, the only way I see this I see this ending. Either they negotiate another truce at the end. Uh, Laveau ends up killing Fiona. A new Supreme emerges. And that new Supreme wipes out the voodoo clan. Uh, leave comments, let me know, you know, your thoughts on the episode, let me know how you think, like I said, again, this is my, my, my first podcast, so I know I've been jumping all over the place, um, I tried to organize my thoughts the best I could, but, uh, let me know what you think, uh, leave a comment, and, uh, we'll be back next week.